pull all our, our tomatoes out of our aquaponic system. And what happens is sometimes little babies will just literally pop from the seeds um, and we'll find little babies uh, growing literally in the water um, by themselves. So um, normally I would throw them out, but because we had plasma in this system, we decided to test and see what was going to happen. So we came, we found little six little baby plants at about 30 centimeters long and we replanted them in to see how they would grow through the winter. So that was April 2016, which is, is our autumn here in, on, in the Southern Hemisphere. And so th these would have to be growing through the winter. Um, in previous years, we've tried to grow tomato plants in winter, even in our greenhouse, which is not a big greenhouse, um, with no success. They, they do not die, but they remain, remain very small and they don't grow at all until the spring starts. Um, so in the aquaponic system, we had also placed bottles of the, of the Gantz in the water, and we were also foliar spraying the plants at least once a week with the liquid plasma water. So this was the 30, 31st of July, 2016, in the midwinter. Um, yes, we didn't have a very icy winter this year, and we are coastal, so we don't get a lot of frost. But yes, the, the, the uh, grass was brown and we had slight frosts through time. So um, if you notice, the stems are very thick, which was highly unusual, and they were growing strong and had good, um, good development on the ends, the tips, the grain tips. And this was the 16th of September, 2016. As you can see, they're as tall as a man. And we would normally be at this stage either planting seeds or have just taken tiny seedlings out of our greenhouse to put into, into the system. So we already have huge amounts of growth. And um, we are, if you have a look here, the um, stems were as thick as a pencil. And with cocktail tomatoes, they often aren't hugely thick. So the, these stems were almost like your big beefsteak tomato stems could be. <coughs> this was on the 11th of October, so they'd already started making beautiful fruit. Um, it wasn't very hot yet, so <coughs> the fruit was still quite green. Just wait, oh, oh, there we go. Sorry, it didn't come through so fast. So yeah, the 11th of October, the fruit started looking like it was nearly ready. <coughs> And this was just as everything was warming up. So the comments were, our tomato plants have grown through the winter with, without any a cover or a greenhouse. Um, we were picking fruit in about two weeks, that was in October, compared to only in December or January of previous years, because our seedlings always normally go in in September, October. Um, traditional planting and harvesting seasons can be extended. And there's no need for expensive greenhouse infrastructure. We can grow crops in areas and conditions that they would not normally grow in. Um, so now we also have some feedback from January 2017, which is, is now. So during November, we were picking lovely tomatoes with real flavor. When summer really kicks in here in Australia, we go from normal weather of 25 to 29 degrees Celsius to heat waves of 35 to 40 degrees Celsius. Um, this hit us at the end of November, beginning of December. The changing conditions were too much and the tomato plants could not cope. They became very weak and unhappy. And what we had done is we changed the environment so that they could grow well during the winter. But when the change in the magrav fields to extreme heat happened, it was too high for our field created around the plants. Our environment became the weaker field in relation to the new environment of extreme heat. So we can now understand that if we create a stronger magrav environment around our plants, we can grow food all year round without the need for expensive greenhouses um, for heating or for cooling. <coughs> 